Welcome to my tutorial on performing a session hijack using cross-site scripting. I've got three virtual machines I'm using today. I've got a Kali Linux machine which I'm using as my attacker. I've got a Pentester Lab machine which I'm using as my vulnerable website. And I've got a Ubuntu machine which I'm using as my victim. This is the Kali Linux machine. I've currently got a web browser running with the version of the Pentester Lab site and I've also got a just a terminal. On the right we have the cross-site scripting to MySQL Pentester Lab machine. It's running a vulnerable website. On the left is our victim machine. It's running Ubuntu and it's got a web browser loaded and is showing the a page of the uh, Pentester Lab vulnerable website. We have previously found that the comment system on this blog is vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks. We will use a persistent cross-site scripting attack to target other users of the blog. When they browse to the comment system, the script will capture their session cookie and send it to the Kali Linux machine. I will now insert the script into a comment on the blog. When the script is executed, it will attempt to access an image resource on the Kali machine. The session cookie of the user is appended to this request. The Kali machine is then able to intercept the session cookie. The inserted comment is blank, but if you view source you can actually see the JavaScript as it's loaded. We now need a way to intercept this cookie on the Kali machine. We'll use the netcat command to set up port 80 to listen for requests. This will capture the request from the victim and send it to the console. This is a very basic method of capturing the data and will not work well with sites with lots of traffic. We now move to the victim machine. This is representative of a real user of the blog. In this case, this user has admin rights to the blog to allow posting of material. By stealing the session cookie of an admin user, we should be able to obtain access to the admin page without requiring a password. We can now check for the existence of a session cookie for this site. In Preferences, Privacy, Remove Individual Cookies, you can check the details for any cookie on the machine. Here you can see the session cookie for the vulnerable website. If the user now navigates to the front page of the site and clicks on the comment link, they will be taken to the comment page and the stored script will be executed. The site will send a request for an image to the Kali machine. The netcat command has been completed and captured the request information on the console. This information will include the session cookie. On the screen you can see the output from the netcat command and overlaid is a screenshot from the user's browser preferences. The two session cookies are the same. We are now going to attempt to use this cookie to hijack the user's session. To achieve this, we will set the attacker's session ID to the value we just captured using the cross-site scripting attack. We use the browser development tools to insert this value. By replacing the PHP session ID with the captured version, we can fool the website into believing we are the victim and we will have the same access on this site. Now that we have changed our session ID, we can browse to the admin pages of the website. As expected, the site does not ask for a password and the admin pages are shown. We now have full control over the website with the ability to modify content and add new content. Thanks for watching my session hijacking demonstration. Links to related content in the description below. Enjoy your day.